I'm Mel Underbaki, Deputy Executive Director of the Coalition for Civil Freedoms. Our focus traditionally has been political prisoners who have been unjustly targeted in the war on terror, and these people have largely been Muslims. The Candace militia case was a little different. In this case, three militia members, Curtis Allen, Gavin Wright, and Patrick Stein, were accused of plotting to bomb an apartment complex in Garden City, Kansas, that was home to a number of Somali refugees. They were convicted of conspiracy to use a weapon of mass destruction and sentenced to 25, 26, and 30 years, respectively. Like many Muslims before them, these men were entrapped by a paid FBI informant who largely created the plot that was then foiled by the FBI. This is a clip from a webinar called FBI Entrapment Beyond Muslims, the Kansas Militia Case. The webinar can be viewed in its entirety on the Coalition for Civil Freedom's YouTube channel. Uh, in this clip, Jim Pratt, one of Patrick Stein's attorneys, describes the actions of Dan Day, the informant who was paid by the FBI to gain this conviction. It's centered around uh, an FBI informant um, named Dan Day. Dan Day is an interesting figure. He um, worked a lot of pseudo law enforcement positions. He was a um, guard at a juvenile detention facility, if I remember correctly. He was a probation officer. Um, and at the time he got involved with the FBI at the very beginning, um, he was unemployed. And he was paid, I believe he was paid around $15,000 for the arrests of the three, but he had been paid, and I think the number is about $11,000 prior to the arrest, and then he got the arrest bonus. Um, we still don't know what the conviction bonus was. There were periods of time where Patrick Stein disagreed with Curtis Allen and Patrick Stein said, look, I'm just done with this. I'm done dealing with these people. I'm tired of Curtis, you know, telling us what to do. And Dan Day would say, look, you need to, you know, stick together for the cause um, is one phrase that he used quite often, you know, for the cause. Um, Dan Day was the only one who lived in Garden City. Patrick lived in Wright, Kansas, out of Dodge City, and the other two uh, lived in Liberal. So there was all they're all about an hour away from each other. So Dan Day would continue to report on what was going on at this apartment complex in Garden City, and Dan Day it was Dan Day's idea to join um, the refugee organization that was there in Garden City to help these people, so he could get inside information. Uh, these were all things that Dan Day suggested he do to move this along, not Patrick or any of the others. Um, at one point, you know, Patrick said uh, about getting maps or, or aerial photography of uh, this apartment complex, and Dan Day didn't have a printer, so he went to the FBI to get it. Um, during trial, I asked uh, Dan Day, well, did you ever try to talk them out of this or say this isn't a good idea or, or anything like that? And his response was, that was not my job. That was not part of my persona, as he put it. Um, the same with the undercover FBI agent who uh, talked about getting, making a bomb for them. I asked, did you ever say this isn't a good idea or maybe we shouldn't do this or, you know, maybe your efforts are better spent here. And again, he said that was not my job. His job was to, to get this to a point where they could charge somebody with attempted use of a weapon of mass destruction, uh, not just a conspiracy. Um, interestingly, they set up a meeting um, with Patrick, the others decided not to go where the FBI brought in fully automatic weapons for Patrick to shoot um, out in the country. And the purpose of this was, and it's in the report and, and words I'll never forget, 
to create chargeable offenses. So if they had to arrest, if for some reason they had to arrest them and they couldn't make the weapon of mass destruction case, they would have a case for possession of fully automatic weapons. And the FBI agent admitted on the stand that Patrick Stein possessing the weapons that the FBI gave him to fire that day was an illegal act. And that's why they brought them. So they would have something to charge him with. And, and that sort of continued through, throughout the case. Um, they weren't getting anywhere. And when they weren't getting anywhere, it was then decided, okay, we'll bring in somebody who can offer to make the bomb for them. There was one tape where the FBI was giving day instructions and um, on what to do at this meeting, you know, you need to get, I think it was, you need to get Curtis to say this. And they realized that the tape was recording and you can hear the female FBI agent say, oh shit, as she turned it off. And in my closing, talked about Dan Day being a pseudo police officer and sort of finally got to live those dreams when he became a paid confidential informant for the FBI.